When it comes to the technical side of music production, there isn't really a graph or tool that is as important as the volume reassignment graph. Now I don't know if that is its actual name, that's just the name that I've given to it. But today I want to talk to you about this graph and show you what it actually means. So here I have a project with a few examples that we're going to go over. The very first one that I want to go over is a wave shaper because that's the clearest, easiest to understand example of what this graph actually does. So what I have here is I have an oscillator, a wave shaper, a utility to just remove 3 dB from the gain here, and then an oscilloscope. What this means that we have an oscillator that goes through the wave shaper and then we can see the result of what the wave shaping is doing. We start with a simple sine wave at 100 Hz and 0 dB and thus our output is a normal sine wave here. So now I've opened up the wave shaper and you can see it's in its default state. The only thing that I've done with this M wave shaper is just set the wet to 100% because that's going to make it more clear what is actually happening. Now you may have experimented with a wave shaper before and maybe not understood completely what it does. So today I want to talk about exactly what what it's doing. So you can see just looking at the graph that we have dB readouts on the x-axis as well as the y-axis here. And this already is going to suggest what it's going to do. Right now this wave shaper is in its idle state and you can see that nothing is really changing from the sine wave. This is after the wave shaper. But if I start to push it up you can see that the shape is starting to change. I can change it like this. And you can see that I'm modifying the shape of this waveform, hence the name wave shaper. So what this wave shaper actually does is it looks at the input graph for any given sample and it says, okay, this sample is playing at minus 6 dB. It then goes up to the graph and then maps it to whatever value is on the graph here. This means that if I move this highest point, for example, it's just going to apply a volume difference. What's more interesting is what happens when you start adding points to it, because I can double click here and add an extra point. I can double click here and add another point. And you can see that I can pretty easily start creating very cool, very unique shapes that you wouldn't be able to create otherwise. There isn't really a traditional distortion algorithm that allows you to create this shape from a sine wave, just like this. Now this wave shaper is currently set to symmetrical mode, which means that everything that's happening on the top side of the waveform also happens identically to the bottom side of the waveform, but we can change that. We can set asymmetric mode on here, now it turns into percentages and no longer dB. The middle part is where the silence is, so if I move this away, you can see that our silence point, what traditionally becomes silence, is moving up or down. If I now modify the top half of the graph, you can see that only the top half will update. Same is true for the bottom half. Now you might say, okay, this is very, very interesting, this wave shaper idea. This is a very, very unique kind of plugin and you don't often see it. So why is this graph so important? Well, this graph actually shows up in a whole bunch of different plugins and processes that you use on a daily basis, but maybe haven't thought about before as actually being this graph. So I have a few examples of that. Going into the saturator, we can see this small graph in here. This is the same kind of graph. The only difference is that you just have a choice of a bunch of different preset graphs here. As well as this wave shaper, which allows you to create kind of custom graphs like this. It maybe changes a little bit the shape here as well. But this is the same kind of volume reassignment graph that we saw in the wave shaper before. The same is also true for Serum. This is again a volume reassignment graph. You can see you can turn it up and that will increase the drive. You can see that Overall the loudness gets increased and we get this saw-like characteristics usually that comes from a tube distortion. In fact, if I quickly move the oscillator and oscilloscope over, you can see that if I change the amount of mix that it just turns this into a square wave. Like this. It's not very very precise because obviously there's a little bit of like a roll off here. You can see it in the graph as well, so there's also going to be a little bit of a roll off here. But it turns your sine wave into a square wave. Now this means that something that you might have not known about this graph is that you can actually see what is happening to the waveform if you think about it a little bit when choosing different algorithms. You can see we have a hard clipper, we have a diode distortion, we have another diode distortion which has these little peaks in here which are represented right here as you can see. We have linear fold which is a mess, we have sine fold which is also kind of a mess and you can see the things that it's doing to your waveform. We have a zero square distortion, which is a distortion that acts on the lowest volumes instead of the highest. And you can see that again in here. You can see that at the low volumes, we get an increase in loudness. 
We have downsampling as well. If I turn the drive up, you can see the downsampling being applied here. And you can see the same happening to the curve as well. Here we have the asymmetrical distortion. So this is going to change the distortion depending if it's on the top or the bottom side of the waveform, which you can see happening as well here. We have different shapes on the top as opposed to the bottom here, as you can see. And I could go on and explaining every single curve in here, but that's something that you can experiment with yourself as well. The final place where this graph shows up is actually in compressors. And you might have not thought about it like that, but a compressor and a wave shaper is essentially the same kind of tool, only with a little bit of smoothing applied to the compressor. So whereas a wave shaper, like we saw before, instantly changes the volume dependent on the graph. So for example, if we're looking at a graph like this, you can see that it will instantly look here, it will say, oh, minus 6 dB is going to go to this value and it's going to become louder. What will happen in the compressor is that there's an attack and release time to it. So there is smoothing that is being applied. And I can show you that this graph also exists within the compressor if I go to this tab here and you can look, this is the same kind of graph. You may have seen it in other compressors as well. We can see here now we have a limiter to just clearly show you for this threshold here, anything above this threshold will be assigned to the volume of the threshold itself. If we have a lower ratio, then obviously that assignment is going to grow with increased loudness. So this actually means that you can get the compressor to distort as well if you wanted to. And the way that you would do that is you would minimize the attack and the release. And in this way, you essentially have turned your compressor into a clipper. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope that it was interesting. It was a little bit of a technical dive into these different tools. But if you understand and know your tools, then it's very, very easy to work with them. And it's very easy to see what all of these processes and different graphs are actually doing to your signals. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new here and you want to see more of what I do, then make sure that you're subscribed. You can also turn on bell notifications if you want to be notified by YouTube whenever I post something. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.